Hi, my name is Mr. Ballins. I work at John Rolfe Middle School. I teach technology, and today I'm here to talk to you about West Point Bridge Designer. This is West Point Bridge Designer 2010. It's not the latest version. The latest version out there is obviously 2011. Um, the differences between the two are I have not found any yet, but they do release a new program every year. <clears throat> um, this is on Henrico County's list of approved programs, so it can be downloaded and installed on the students' laptops if you get with your um, ITRT. Uh, to make that happen. Um, what's great about this program is it's very simple to use. Uh, you can pick it up in a matter of probably about five minutes, but it's got some very in-depth uh, design and engineering things going on behind the scene that students can really take advantage of to understand a little bit more about bridges and how bridge design works and the forces and things that act on bridges. <clears throat> so first thing I'm going to go through with you is how to actually build a bridge. Again, like I said, it's very simple. You've got your tools up here. There are four very basic tools. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to add um, joints to your bridge and a joint is anywhere where things are connected. So as you can see in this design there's already some joints here. Um, these are the joints that West Point Bridge Designer starts off with you um, for your road bed. Because um, every bridge has to start out with a road bed and then it's the support around it you build that holds that road bed up. Um, and then you've got your um, member tool here um, to draw members to connect your points, your arrow tools to select joints and members. Um, and your eraser tool which is pretty self-explanatory to just um, erase things. So we'll go ahead and we'll start by adding some members. So as you can see you get these crosshairs here to help you line everything up. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and make a very simple and uh, common bridge design to show you um, what a bridge looks like. Okay and we can see that this one I accidentally made a little higher so I can go ahead and click on my selection tool. I can grab it and I can move it back down. Okay, so I can go ahead and grab my bridge member uh, tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw all the way across and join all these pieces. Okay, then I'm going to come up here, draw over, right, and make connections here. Every joint needs to be connected somewhere. Okay, so if it's not connected, um, it'll tell you your bridge is unstable and it won't allow you to test it. Um, for example, um, when I get done here, if I go ahead and I try to run a simulation or a test on it, should tell me right your structure model is unstable it gives you tips on how to fix that for the most part though you can tell just by looking at it obviously I need to come across here and connect these points and able to make an actual bridge design now you can also add points um, on the bottom okay and you know um, make connections there uh, so to do something like right um, and come through okay but I'm not going to do that today so what I can do is I can go ahead and click on my eraser tool I can erase uh, these points and if I erase a joint it will delete the members that are attached to them so go ahead and just erasing things as simple as that so now I can grab my selection tool here if I want to change some things in my design and move some things around I can do that okay another really um, another thing that you're gonna need the selection tool for is modifying your bridge okay so as you can see over here on the top section we have some different options that we can choose so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select all the pieces of my bridge. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the size of the bar that I'm using. Okay, so I'm going to change it from what it is now, 140 by 140. I'm going to change it over to 180 by 180. Now watch what happens to my price, which is right here. Now as you can see, my price went up significantly. Okay, and if we click off here, you can see that the size of my um, bridge went up significantly too. Now there are some other things that we can do. We can change it from solid bar to hollow tubing. We can also change the type of material here so you have um, three options. You know, you have your high strength low alloy steel and your quenched and tempered steel. Okay, so again those are some options that students can get into and kind of figure out what effect that has on the cost. So once I've got a bridge built what I can do is go ahead and um, test my simulator. So if you look in here you'll see um, a virtual truck comes across the bridge and it looks like this model is going to hold up. Another thing that students really enjoy doing is playing with the views so they can look at the bridge from all kinds of different angles um, and change things around to how they're looking at it to see different parts and they have a lot of fun playing with this and they'll get in some really weird um, positions when they look in their bridge and all you have to do is just click home to get back. You can also look at the bridge from the standpoint of the truck as it travels across the bridge. So there are a lot of neat visual things there. So this is your real world testing. Okay. Now right now I've got a bridge that works. I'm at a cost of about 469,000. Um, so what I can do is I can go ahead 
and work on changing some things to try to lower that cost. And that's what I do in my room is I um, challenge the students to design the lowest cost bridge. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is start um, selecting materials. So the first thing I can do is I can select all the materials. And I can change from solid bar uh, to hollow tubing. And if you look in here, you'll see my price went down to about half of what it just was. And then I'll go through and run a test. So now you can see the bridge is sagging and it's buckled and broken. So it won't work. So I come back here and everywhere where there are lines through it is where my bridge design failed. Now I can also go over here. Okay, and it'll tell me um, on the readout here this has all of my struts or my pieces of my bridge all numbered here so for example if I click on 6 it's going to pull up 6 over here on the drawing um, if I click on 10 it's going to pull up 10 and I can figure out where those pieces are that broke and um, what I can do to fix them so for example maybe what I want to do is select all these pieces and change these to solid bar still leaving the other ones hollow tube this is going to change the, the cost of my bridge it's going to make it a little bit more expensive, but it's going to make it cheaper than if they were all um, solid bar. Okay, or you can change the size of them. Okay, and I'm not going to go through and change all of these, but just so that you kind of get the picture, um, you can hold down the control key and click on multiple bridge it, bridge parts to do. Um, if you know you want to make all of them um, solid tube, you can go ahead and change that. And then what I can do is I can go back and test my bridge again and see if it um, holds up this time. So it looks like that piece again gave way, so I can come back and it'll show me again. Okay, so maybe these pieces need to be um, thicker. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll change these. Oh, they're still set to hollow tube, that was the problem. So I'll change those to solid bar. Now if I go ahead and run it, looks like my bridges, oh, spoke too soon, didn't hold. So I can come back here and I can figure out what pieces broke and work on trying to fix them. Okay. So there are a lot of different things that you can do. There are also reports you can run. So I can look at my cost calculation report. So it's going to tell me what pieces are um, costing the most amount of money and where that's coming out. And you can print that and analyze it. Another valuable report to look at is your load test results. So this tells me for each member um, what the compression force on it was and what the compression uh, strength of that material actually is. Um, same thing with tension force over here and tension strength so some pieces are under tension and compression some pieces will just be under tension some will just be on compression and it lets you know um, you know where they were okay so for example these were my pieces that failed over here so you can adjust the pieces to get them as close as tolerance as possible which is going to bring that cost down so let me go ahead and open a bridge of one of my students and we won't save that so this is one that one of my students built and he spent a lot of time working on this to get all the pieces um, to their maximum point to where they were just about to break. Um, and again, I had a lot of students working on this and so that I've got a lot of different bridge designs that are all right around this price range. So depending on the span that you choose, again, I picked um, 16 meters for this class, but I, depending on the class, I'll change the span so that you don't have students trying to copy each other's designs from year to year, class to class. So I might give one class a span of 16, another class a span of 22, um, which totally changes the design of the bridge. Um, so if we go here, we can look at his report and we can see his load test results. Uh, well, we have to run it first. So we'll run the test and as you can see, his bridge sags quite a bit. Um, so they're very much at their breaking points. Um, and obviously engineers really wouldn't want to design a bridge this way, but it's fun for students to try to figure out you know what parts of bridge need to be stronger what parts need to be don't need to be as strong so for example if you have all these top pieces very strong you know very thick do these ones in here need to be as large or do they need to hold up as much weight as the pieces on the top and the bottom right so are these more just for support and these are the um, pieces carrying most of the load of the bridge so the students really have a good time but they get interested in it like I said we can run the report and we can look at his load test results and see how close his tolerances are between the two columns here and see so for example this one its compression force is 211 and it's only rated to hold about 212 which means that's very close to almost breaking right so these are the cool things that you can look at at a middle school level um, I don't really get too deep into a lot of that stuff for example most of what they'll use is this readout over here and for them it's more just experimentation and trying and it breaks and they go back and they change it and 
again it's just that experimentation process but in a high school level or possibly in a physics class um, you could get into deep into some math like this um, I could also see this used at an elementary level with just students playing around and kind of making three or four different types of bridge the program has templates that you can start off with um, or they have templates where the bridge designs behind here on a dotted line and you just make it based on that template um, so again this stu this uh, program can be used throughout various grade levels in my opinion um, I hope you got a lot out of the uh, video tutorial today on West Point Bridge Builder and I hope that you can work it into your curriculum thanks